Can you see my breath? That means it's getting cold out, folks. And what better project to build in the backyard than an epic backyard hockey rink? Here are the materials you'll need. First things first, let's get a nice level patch in our backyard. Find something that doesn't have too much of a grade slope to it, so that way when you fill it up, you have a nice level rink. Next step, mark out where your rink's gonna go using corner stakes. I'm gonna use these spikes and put four x four posts in for the corners of my rink, and then it'll help me identify where I need to run my boards. So the key factor when you're doing any survey, you wanna know how big your tarp is. The tarp here is gonna be a 32 by 50. That means that you need to allow for excess to go over your boards. If I'm using two by tens, that means I want two feet on each side to flap over. So a 32 by 50 is in actual fact going to be 28 by 46. All right, so figured out a square. We got it all set out. We did the diagonal check. We're within an inch or so. That's great, especially on a scale this big. Now, call on a friend, Mark, and trust him. If you don't want to cut up steaks, grab the balusters. These are beautiful, because you know what I do with them? I cut them in half, and these little points save you all the time in the world, and you just drive them home. Every two feet, and they're perfect. I've got all my posts in place. I'm gonna wrap a string. This will give me a straight line to follow when I'm running my boards. For the skirt board, I'm using a two by 10. It'll allow me to follow the different heights in the land, so that if the water is two inches here and three inches there, I don't have to worry about it going over the board. I'm using pressure treated lumber now as an investment because in the future I want to be able to use these boards over and over again. If I was using regular lumber, the weather that we'll see through the winter time, this stuff would probably have some rot and debris coming out of it and I don't want to see that now because it's a big investment and we want it to last. This is a splice plate. When we have a joint, we use these plates. Cut off a little bit of extra 2 by 10 and you stick it between the joint. Now it's time to tighten up the posts on the corner and then put in my boards. And on the ends, I'm using three quarter inch plywood with two by fours to make some sweet boards. Remember, this is epic. In order to make these, all you need is two two by fours, a half a sheet of three quarter inch ply, and I make them in four foot sections. So now all I've done is made a frame, screw it all together, apply a three quarter inch sheet of plywood to it, and now all I have to do is go put it at the end of the rink. With my posts secured, this attached to that, there's nothing left to do but put in some back bracing and it's rock solid. I want to make sure my epic hockey rink has a nice plumb wall, so in order to do so, I take my level, I put it to the back, I put a spine on the back of the board, and with that brace in place, I'll see that this thing is actually, in fact, pretty plumb. Now, I put a diagonal brace in place, and once it's there and set, all I have to do is take my stake, Drive it in the ground, making sure that it's on an X angle. So that way, when this pulls back, this pulls up. It's locked in nice and tight. All I have to do now is sink in a couple screws, and we're rock solid. Well, it's been a long afternoon, but folks, the epic rink is built. We've got our frame, two by 10 skirting, going all the way down the boards. We've got our four by four posts in the corner ready to take on some action. Then over here on the end, we built up these beautiful three quarter inch plywood frame boxes. Each one it reinforced with a two by four and each one has its own spine brace that's staked into the ground giving it rock solid ability to take those hits when the play gets a little rough, all right? So now, last thing to do, we lay out our tarp. Roll it out 50 feet and then open up the width. What we're looking for is a foot and a half on each side to two feet to roll over the boards I've got out my hammer tacker. If you don't have one of these, it's a beautiful investment to have. I'm going to staple this in. The reason I'm stapling it is because there's gonna be no weight on this end of the sheet when it's against the boards. I've got enough slack here that the water will fill and it won't pull down on the tarp. Using clamps is always a good thing, so that make sure that you have a lot of excess, and then tack away. And this just prevents the water from running out over the lip. I've got lots of excess, so that means that the water won't have any pressure to pull the tarp back in. Remember that excess over the edges, you won't have to worry about leakage. Well, there you have it. The epic hockey rink built and concluded. All we're waiting for now is a couple good sub-zero nights and for that hose to fill up this rink. 